Roy, in trying to understand what human mentality is, the concept of self-awareness has always seemed very important to me. As a research social psychologist, you've really pioneered the deep understanding of concepts like self-esteem and self-control. How can we really understand self-esteem and self-control so that it reflects on our appreciation of what it means to be human? Self-control is essentially the, the, the capacity to change yourself. It's to alter your states, to and not just change them in any way, but to change them, to bring them into line uh, with ideas, goals, standards, laws, rules uh, that, uh, that may be changing your, your thought processes, controlling your emotions, uh, resisting impulses and desires, uh, improving your performance so that you uh, keep trying when you feel like quitting or you don't choke under pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, so that capacity to change ourselves. Uh, now, everyone thinks, oh, we need more self-control. Uh, self-control of, of the list of 24, 25 basic traits, that is the least commonly cited one is my, one of my best traits. Uh, more people say they have, uh, have problems with it. Uh, than uh, just about any of the other uh, basic uh, virtues. Mm -hmm. But uh, the class is both half full and half empty. We have plenty more self-control uh, than most other creatures do. Uh, so we're, we're capable of remarkable feats of self-control compared to uh, other species. It's just if we had more, we'd be even better <laughs> off. So nature did give us a pretty good dose of it. We can just see if nature had given us more, we would do... Uh, that much better. It's crucial for humans because the key to understanding what makes us human is is our, our way of relating to each other, our social life. Mm -hmm. uh, we live in culture which involves sharing information, complementary roles, economic trade, uh, division of labor, all these things. They work really well for us, but they're systems. They only work if we can change our behavior uh, to function within the system, to follow the rules, make ourselves, make ourselves work. In other words, do things we don't feel like doing, uh, but that are valued by society. Uh, so, and, and that, are, that are productive and beneficial to us. Uh, so self-control uh, enables us to change our behavior. It gives us this great uh, flexibility so that we can work with others in a system uh, that will then produce all these marvelous benefits that for us. That requires a sense of self-awareness, doesn't it? Uh, yes. Uh, indeed, uh, one of the breakthroughs is not my work, but uh, Carver and Shire uh, took up the self-awareness research, which social psychologists had been studying, saying, why do we have self-awareness? What is the purpose of reflecting on yourself? It's so you can control yourself. You know, just being aware of yourself has very little benefit. Uh, you know, you can look at yourself in the mirror and admire yourself or something like that. But uh, the real benefit is that you can look at something about yourself and say, well, this could be improved. This could be different. Uh, it's very hard, and we know laboratory studies and so on, it's very hard to control your behavior when you're not aware of it. Mm. So almost any time people try to control their behavior, they keep track of it. Uh, my grandmother said, you want to control your money, your spending, write down what you spend every day. Mm -hmm. Dieters all keep track of how many calories they eat and, and things like that. Uh, exercise, you got to write on the calendar every day whether you had a workout so that you don't, don't fool yourself. Keeping track self-awareness, in other words, mm -hmm. of your own behavior, that is one key step in, in being able to change yourself and, and make yourself into the person you want to be. What about self-esteem? All right. Uh, the value of self-esteem has been a controversial one in, in psychology. Many of us, including myself, uh, were persuaded for a while that this was going to be a key to solving lots of problems. Uh, we thought uh, you know, we noticed correlations that uh, you know students in school with higher mm -hmm. self-esteem got better grades. And we thought, okay, great, if we can raise everybody's self-esteem, uh, then everyone will get better grades. Only it didn't work out that way. Self-esteem is a result, uh, not a cause. Nature doesn't really care how well you like yourself. Uh, nature cares, you know, for things that help you survive and reproduce. Uh, for humans to survive and reproduce, we have to be accepted by the group, and so. Your self-esteem is essentially meaningful and valuable as your own inner measure of, am I the sort of person that others will want to include in their social groups? Will they want to hire me? Will they want to marry me or at least sleep with me? Will they want to have me join their club uh, and so forth? These are, you know, these are life and death issues, especially in our evolutionary past. You couldn't survive alone as a human being. You had to be part of a group. And so self-esteem probably was, you know, mattered like your inner record of, am I the sort of person 
uh, that others will like, and uh, if, if not, then I better find some other way to make people uh, like me. How, how can we distinguish the benefits of self-esteem being more because I will be part of a group rather than it's going to help me because I just feel like a better person? We can study the direct effects of self-esteem by uh, either measuring or, or manipulating people's level of self-esteem and then giving them a task to do and seeing if they do better. On laboratory tasks, people with high self-esteem don't really uh, uh, perform all that better. Uh, students in school, there's people with high self-esteem get higher grades, but when they track them over time, it's that getting good grades leads to having higher self-esteem. It's not that high self-esteem leads mm -hmm. uh, to getting good grades. Uh, so in the laboratory, what you can do is you can manipulate the self-esteem by doing what? Well, uh, well, how much this works is controversial, but uh, to manipulate self-esteem, what, what some people have done is uh, bring people in and randomly, uh, you know, you'll have them take a personality test and then randomly giving them feedback, telling some of them, oh, you're this wonderful person with all these good traits. <laughs> Others say, oh, you're not so hot, you have, have these negative traits. It maybe moves people a little bit up, up and down, so you get... Uh, and then you have them do some kind of and task. And then you have them do some kind of task. Uh, I think uh, most people, most researchers today favor measuring self-esteem rather than trying to uh, manipulate it because when you manipulate it, it, it sets off a bunch of other things as well. But still, it, at the end result, it's, it's not all that important in terms of your self-esteem for yourself, but it is important for how you are in the group. Several colleagues and I did a giant survey of the literature uh, about five or six years ago looking for how are people with high self-esteem better off than other people? Uh, are they more moral? Are they better at their jobs? Are they better at school? Better relationships? Uh, there was very little that we found. There were essentially uh, two things. One is they're more uh, initiative uh, because they're more willing to act on what they think. Uh, people with low self-esteem kind of doubt whether they're right and so they're hesitant. Uh, and the other is that it feels good. So people with high self-esteem are happier and mm -hmm. uh, maybe bounce back from the stress a little better and so on. Those are the two main things. We didn't find much else. Uh, yet people are very concerned about self-esteem. So we're trying to resolve the question, why do people care so much about something that has so few pragmatic benefits? Um, and the answer is it's tied to something even if self-esteem doesn't matter, it's tied to something that does matter, namely whether you're accepted and included in the group. Um, thinking well of yourself, thinking poorly of yourself, in our evolutionary history, it didn't really make much difference. Mm. It's, uh, uh, you had the, the, the same contingencies and the same tasks, uh, but being included, being excluded, that was a life or death issue. Humans could not survive on their own. We only make it by being, being parts of, uh, of groups. So. Uh, why we care about self-esteem, it's not that it's influential in its own, uh, on its own basis, but uh, it's a measure of something that's really important.